Hello and welcome to this tutorial on creating the Wandering Eye. Now, this is a pretty simple implementation of the Wandering Eye with a few additional features. Um, the original goal for this was to basically put this in a form so when you're typing and moving around, the eye follows you and then when you get to the password section, the eye closes. But what I'll do is I'll show you how to make the eye initially and then we'll do another video on how to actually do the input form and have everything work when you get to the password section. So without further ado, if you are new to Curious Byte, uh, do give the video a like, subscribe, and I'll show you how we made this. So let's get started. So I'm going to use Emmet to generate some HTML. So I'll just put an exclamation mark down, press tab, and we'll have everything pop up here. And I'll put following eye as the title. Let's put some content down. Now the first thing we need is a wrapper to contain all of this work in. So let's do that now. Do a div of wrapper and within that we'll contain uh, the element for the eye and within that we will contain the element to have the eyelid shut as well. And we'll have a span as well. We also need our eyeball. So within the eye we'll just add our eyeball as well. And there we go, that's everything sorted. So let's hop into the CSS. So let's sort out the actual body of the site first and just add some simple styling. First off, we don't want any margin. Remove the padding as well. And we'll set a background color to 333, let's say. There we go, nice basic gray. You can set it to whatever you want. Uh, and let's deal with the wrapper. So we want it to be position absolute. We'll set a background just for now so we can see it. Uh, we'll say top 50% width 100%. So let's sort out the wrapper. So let's say position absolute, uh, top 50%. And we basically want to just place this in the center. You don't really need this. Um, and this will change based on your implementation. And then we'll just align this to the center as well, just to make sure that we get all the content in the center. So let's move on to the actual eyeball itself. So we'll say that has a width of 240 pixels, that has a height of 120 pixels. And we'll add a background of white, obviously. And we'll make it inline block. And we'll give it a margin of 40 pixels. And we'll give it a board radius as well. So we'll say about 50% because we want it pretty, uh, pretty eye shaped. And then we want it to basically be a container. So when we set it to position relative, what we're saying is anything that's absolute within that will essentially be contained or be relative to the container, which is the eye. And you'll see why that's relevant in just a short moment. And we want the overflow to basically contain this. So, so we want all of the content to stay within here. So we want the eyeball and the eyelid to basically not go outside and flow outside of the container and the border radius. Now, after we've added that, as you notice, when you hover over, you just still see the, like the, the normal pointer. So I want to change that. So it looks like it's interactable, which it will be because once you hover over it, it will actually close the eye. Uh, we've added the eyeball. I think that's everything for the eyeball. Now we've got the general setup going. Let's move on to the actual eye itself. So for the eye itself or the eyeball in the center, what we want to do is we'll give it a width of 40 pixels. Give it a height of the same and we'll add a black background and we'll also want it position absolute. Now, because we've set the container as relative, this will basically just bounce around inside it and this will act like a magic container that holds it. It's not magic. It's science. Because them are the facts. Right. So we want top left 50. So we're starting to center it now. We're starting to get into the position we want. And now we're really going to nail it into position with uh, this translate. And there you go. Right, now we want to add a border onto this eye. So we could say teal, uh, which we, I think that's what we'll stick to. We'll just stick to a greeny, bluey, teal color. Um, we'll go border radius 
and we'll say 50% as well. So that'll basically make all of this a circle. And there we go, we've got our eyeball. So we're starting to <laughs> get this to shape up. Now we've got the eyeball in place. Let's animate it. So we want the eyeball to follow us around. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll say eyeball is a constant and we'll link it up to our ball uh, div which is obviously here. So that'll be this eyeball here. And so now we've got this connected up into the eyeball constant. And what we're going to say is when we move the mouse with our lambda function or fat arrow function, there are many names for this. We're going to capture the X and Y coordinate of the mouse movement. So we will do that with native JavaScript. And what we'll say so we'll get the inner width and inner height, and we'll add a percentage via this uh, string. So we'll do the same for the Y coordinate. And then what we want to do is we want to add style to the actual eyeball to move it around, to actually physically move it. And we'll do that by actually adding the coordinates to the X and Y. And the last style that we need to add is transform. And we're basically going to translate it to be, is to stay in the center, but where we want it to go um, using the X and Y coordinates. So let's add the translate style and we will say minus. And let's get this right. This is going to be tricky. We want to add X and obviously a comma, because it's similar to the translate we've done before. We want a minus again. Right, and I believe that's everything. So let's go see if this works. Whoa, and there we go. We've got an eyeball. Now, one thing you might have noticed, in the initial preview, we had an eyelid. And it's pretty weird if you have an eyeball with no eyelid. So let's go add that in now. And that can be added in with just CSS at this point. So let's close this down, because we're not going to need anything else now. So down here, let's add styling to the ship class so we'll give it a width um, we'll give it a width of 300 pixels and a height of 160 pixels background transparent and we want the position to be absolute and luckily obviously because we've set the parent container to relative it's all good all right so we're going to center this as well using the transform translate magic that we used before. And then we want to set the Z index, which is super important. So let's add the eyelid now. So we'll go here and we'll say it'll be display block width of 100% with a height a little bit shorter. We'll say 20%. We'll have a background of so we'll have a skin colored uh, eyelid and we will start to add our animation so first of all we want to say we want to animate all of our properties uh, on the shirt span and then within that we want to add some keyframes so we'll call the keyframes blink and we'll say as zero percent we want the height to be 20%. Um, and at 50%, we want the height to be 100%. And I absolutely love keyframes and how simplistic they are. And then we'll say, once it gets to 100%, at the end of the animation, we want the height to be 20%. So we don't want it to, we want it to return to its original form or its original placement. We don't want it to do something like this. Right, so right now it's not triggering. So we'll just add that trigger so I can show you what I meant with this. Once we hover over the eye, we're going to say, we want you to do something to another element. So we want to do something to the, the shut element. And we'll say, we just want the height to be 100% and that will start triggering all the keyframe uh, blink animation here. So if we go here and we hover over and then we go off. So yeah, so we'll make sure that, that is 20% just so that the animation does work and that's it and that's all you do so now we have our eye that follows us around within our eye container and we have our eyelid on hover now obviously we've got a lot more plans 
with this but it is a cool little thing to do it's just a bit of fun so we're basically gonna have this on top of a form and we'll have it follow the text and when you get to the password section the eyes should shut watch out for that video that'll be part two but i hope you enjoyed part one and it was useful and it was something cool to put in your portfolio and, and something fun to try out so i'll put the code ped link in the description below but if you haven't already make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification to keep your eyes out for part two and other great tutorials on Curious Byte. I've been Harry and this has been Curious Byte.